Hi everyone, welcome to Vision to Reality. My name is Karen Conrad, and I'm so excited that we are moving along in the series called The Promise of Purpose based on my brand new book. Today, we're gonna to be going over chapter one, which is going to encourage you and encourage me that we were made for a purpose. You don't wanna miss this, I'll be right back. Thank you for joining me today. As we are on this journey of the promise of purpose, there are three things that we're gonna to cover today. And this is such an important part of really pursuing God's purpose in our life. Are you ready? Number one, we're gonna talk about how purpose is a key to unlocking your true success and unleashing your destiny. Number two, we're gonna go over God's definition of purpose. And number three, how purpose works in your life and what you can expect. One of the things I share with people is like, I love being inspired. I like to hear what's available to me, uh, but you know what? I wanna know how to live it out. And that's what I'm committed to in this book, The Promise of Purpose, and uh, even in the Bible studies and things that we're doing. Um, but I'm a very practical person and I want to share things with you that you can take and apply in your life. So the first one, purpose is a key to unlocking your true success and unleashing your destiny. Let me share a story with you. Uh, some of the things I share with you, I think, oh my goodness, I can't believe like I was so carnal or <laughs> where I was at. So don't judge me. Okay. But I remember and I'm driving down the hill after a meeting and I was, um, you know, knew that I was called to help uh, bring a vision to reality with a with an organization that I was working with. And remember, I was describing yesterday about kind of the ups and downs of the emotions that I would have, like if I was well received with something or if I felt my boss was pleased with me my emotions were good, but if I felt like I wasn't uh, being valued or maybe I didn't have a good meeting, I would just kind of like plummet. So like this roller coaster thing. Well, this, this certain uh, thing I'm describing to you was a tank in the roller coaster emotion. I had a very bad meeting. I felt like I was giving the right ideas. I felt like I had the answers, but you know what? It just wasn't accepted. And that was really discouraging to me to the point that I was driving down the hill and just crying out to God, sort of like uh, maybe yelling a little bit on the inside, like, what are you doing? Why did you bring me here? If they're not gonna listen, I know that I heard the ideas and when I presented, it was rejected. So it was just like really a bundle of emotions and kind of confused, like, what is going on, Lord? I know you gave this to me. Well, it was one of those times that I believe the Lord allowed to happen because I had to get to that point where I asked the question, like, what is going on? I had gone years and years and years on this roller coaster situation. And I, I believe the Lord just in his mercy is like, I have so much for you, Karen. I've got this amazing destiny ahead, but we need to deal with this. So as I was complaining to him uh, or expressing to him my disappointment in this situation, he just gently spoke to me. And this is what he said. He said, Karen, the gifts and talents you have are mine. And I have placed them in you to help you fulfill the purpose I have designed for your life. It's more important to me than to you that my gifts and talents are honored. Isn't that something? 
I'm going to read that again. I wrote it down, which is why I'm reading it here to you. Um, Karen, the gifts and talents you have are mine, and I have placed them in you to help you fulfill your purpose. I have designed for your life. It's more important to me than to you that my gifts and talents are honored. Wow. So in a moment that he spoke that to me, I can't tell you how much weight was like literally lifted off my shoulders. I thought it was, I didn't even know it, but I thought it was all up to me to do this. And I honestly thought that the gifts and talents, even though, you know, I was like, of course I know this. You read in the Bible that God gives you gifts and talents, but I had really owned them. Um, I even thought that I was the one that maybe brought them about and it was so subtle. And it like revealed in a moment, like, wow, I really was thinking that these gifts and talents are mine. You know how I knew that? Is I was really frustrated and upset when they weren't valued. Well, what the Lord was sharing with me in this moment that I was crying out to him was those gifts and talents, they're mine. And if I gave them to you and they're from me, you can be assured that I'm going to be more concerned about them being used and valued than you need to be. Wow, that literally changed my life. I realized that it wasn't up to me to try to convince people that I knew what I was talking about or try to convince them to value the gifts and talents that I knew God had given me. That set me free. You know, even this last week, I work for several organizations and one of the organizations, you can probably relate to this. Um, I was, a, you know, part of my job was to help to uh, increase donations. And, and uh, that's just kind of like one of the areas that God has gifted me in is to increase revenue. And I had about a year and a half ago, sent in a presentation that had all these ideas on the different things that I, I knew that we should do. That was kind of like strategy. Well, um, I would send ideas and I just hear nothing. A matter of fact, I sent something like three weeks ago that I felt were really good ideas that God had given me and it just kind of sits. That's really hard because you just, for me, I want something to happen. You've probably been that way too, where you send something in, you don't get a response. You feel like it's the right thing to do. You want to help to move an organization forward. But you know what? Sometimes there's just other things on people's plate that are more important. Well, the situation came up where I had sent something in, kind of the same pattern, didn't really hear back. If you fast forward, as it was about a month ago, this idea that I had actually put in that uh, presentation came back up, but it was presented as if it was a new idea that no one else had thought of and someone else completely was really given credit for that idea. And I had to put to practice what I'm teaching you. So I'm just telling you that even as I go through this process and you go through this process, it's almost like there's going to be opportunities. I received opportunities to just really like, okay, do you really believe this? <laughs> So I had to have a little discussion with myself and with the Lord because I actually wanted to email back and say, oh yes, this is something that if you remember, I had presented to you, you know, over a year ago. And uh, my husband is such a good sounding board. And I was telling him like, hey, I think I want to email back and just say, yeah, that's kind of what I said in uh, the PowerPoint, you know, back over a year ago. And Dave is like, Really? Why, why do you feel it's important to do that? And it's like, oh, oh no, that's Holy Spirit talking through him. I realized that I wanted credit for that. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, uh, also I was thinking like, wow, Lord, I thought I had gone beyond this point, but I was still had this thing inside me. Like I want credit for that idea. And he had to remind me 
Well, Karen, the idea is from me. So whether you get credit for it or somebody else gets credit for it, let's just rejoice that we're following through and that the idea that was actually from the Lord is being implemented. Can you relate to that? I know you can. I've never met anybody that hasn't been in this situation where you had an idea and someone else is taking credit for it. But it was really interesting because it's this concept that I'm, I'm sharing with you is that if I'm really understanding my purpose, which for me at this moment, when I was driving down that hill, I realized the Lord just imparted to me a process to help me discover that my purpose was bringing vision to reality. So in the situation I was describing, I was trying to help them bring vision to reality. The idea was not listened to or followed through on. Then over a year later, it comes from another source that I'm like feeling I want credit for it. So why is that, right? It was because I needed to be refreshed and like, oh yeah, Lord, the gifts and talents that you put in me are from you. (laughs) And he wanted to be sure they were being honored. So it helped me to understand like, oh my goodness, instead of me just going on and being upset, I'm actually going to be just like, thank you, Jesus, thankful that first of all, he confirmed that I did hear from him. And second of all, whether it was credit to me or to someone else, that the idea that God gave was being followed through on. And I have no doubt that it will produce the results that it was intended. I think some of you can relate to this, even though maybe it seems uh i'm feeling a little bit like i'm sharing some things with you that is giving you too much insight into my imperfections but we'll just go with that and know that jesus is taking care of all of it right all right so let's go on to the next point first of all uh i want to encourage you that i had found the key to unlock true success and unleash my god-given destiny in an understanding and a humility that the gifts and talents are not mine, but they're God's, that he has really given me the opportunity to steward. Amen. All right. The second point is God's definition of purpose. Purpose is God's display to the world of his workmanship in you. Your purpose was uniquely designed by God. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to repeat that. I want you to really get this. Purpose is God's display to the world of his workmanship in you. I love that. And he uniquely designed us with a purpose. Wow. I like that God wants to show off his workmanship in us. You know, he has no problem with us receiving some of the credit or or you might say it this way of us being more visible. We know that it is God that's behind it and we give him the glory, but he does work through people and through vessels. And so when we know that he's actually a proud dad that looks at us and is like, look at my girl or look at my boy there. When we grab hold of the things that he's given us, we steward them to the point that we're able to flow out of our purpose. And I feel like in a way, God wants to show us off, right? Like, look at my boy, look at my girl. And we do that and we are able to achieve that level of workmanship or uh, maybe um, excitement or fulfillment when we partner with God in the purpose he has for us. And then we bring that knowledge and that, that um, I guess you might say, um, dedication to actually uh, do as much as we can with the gifts and talents that he's given us. All right, I'm going to share a couple scriptures here with you, and uh, these are really encouraging. Are you ready? This is Ephesians 2.10 in the ESV, and again, we're understanding God's definition of purpose. 
It says this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is beautiful. It's saying that we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works. And listen to this. God prepared those works beforehand that we should walk in them. This takes a lot of pressure off us. What this is saying is that God has a plan for our life. He's given us the gifts and talents. Our job is not to um, go like blaze a trail necessarily. Our job is to respond to God. The plans, the purposes are laid out for our life. Our job is to respond to that and walk in what he has already planned for our life. Boy, that is a lot easier um, to think about. Like if all I have to do is respond to him and walk in the plans and purpose he has for me, rather than get out there and try to do it on my own, that's a much more restful position, isn't it? It's really awesome. The other thing is when you know that God laid that plan out before you, it is going to be successful. So I'll give you a personal example. We're called, we know, to do real estate. And so we um, felt really led and called to go and start buying real estate in a small town in central Texas. We didn't know anybody. We just went in based on the information that met a lot of the criteria that we had knowledge of that we wanted to pursue and, and be smart with, right? Good stewards. But then we had a leading of the Lord, like, yes, this is where I want you to start to invest and start to um, create a, a company down there. It's called Sweet Tea Properties. And he even gave us like criteria that these properties should meet because he wants us to go in and be a blessing in that community. Well, we didn't know anybody. And so when we're looking at the rentals, we're looking at doing flips and all this, it's sort of like, but we can't do this. I can't put tile up. <laughs> I can't do, uh, you know, put siding up, roof something. I can't do demolition. Uh, and it was like the Lord had everybody prepared there for us. So we were just obedient in responding to what God called us to do. But we're amazed at the people that we connected with that literally fulfilled every need that we have in pursuit of the real estate that we feel God called us to do is very humbling um, because a lot of times when we go into things, we think, well, it's all up to us to do it. Or we try to just, you know, go and uh, knock down uh, doors and walls to try to make a way for things where really, if we believe what the word says, which we just read, that he has created our path um, before us. All we need to do is respond, walk in that path, be aware, and the gifts and talents that are needed to bring that vision to pass were all around us. We've got an amazing team down there. It's not anybody I would have you know, gone out and expected or tried to hire, but instead just responding to the people that God brought across our path was so peaceful, so easy. And that's what we're talking about here. God's got you. So just step out boldly in what he's called you to do. Certainly be a good steward. Certainly gather knowledge, get educated in things and trust that you are responding and walking out the path that's already been created for you. Isn't that amazing? All right, next one here. We are fellow workers with God who has laid a foundation for our life in purpose. I love this verse because I think it's a marketing verse. <laughs> I'm a marketer and so I get really excited when I see where God is kind of confirming like, yes, I'm in this. This is 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 11, and this is in the New King James Version. It says this, for we are God's fellow workers. Let's pause there for a moment. Wow, this is awesome. You mean I'm not out on my own? No, we are God's fellow workers. So as we pursue his purpose and his vision, what he's saying is like, hey, we're in this together. I want God in it with me. I really do because I've seen the miracles and the, 
just the amazing results that he brings when we are working with him. So that's what he's encouraging us. Let's keep going. You are God's field. You are God's building, not the church building. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, this is absolutely loaded. Let's go back and break this apart a little bit. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation and another builds on it. So this tells you right there, you have gifts and talents, right? But it's by grace. And that was an understanding here. It's according to the grace of God. And then we know that everything that we do is going to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ, right? So when we stay in that foundation, he invites us in to build along with him. It's so beautiful. Then it goes on, the gifts and talents and grace that he's given you to fulfill your purpose are perfectly designed for you. So the gifts and talents that I have God is perfectly designed for me. The gifts and the talents that you have, God has perfectly designed for you to fulfill your purpose. So this is one of the questions that we ask in the Discover Your Purpose assessment. What are the gifts and talents that you have that God has given you? And in that, you can know that they were purposely placed in you to help you fulfill your purpose. Here's some really encouraging scriptures as we go along in this process. First Peter 4.10, and this is in uh, the Passion Translation. Every believer has received grace gifts, so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many colored tapestry of God's grace. Oh, this is so amazing. We've received those gifts by grace. Use them to serve one another. I had a really interesting um, conversation with my son this week. He's always coming up with these entrepreneurial ideas. He's got an amazing mind to build wealth. And um, he's really talented, smart, and really diligent on learning things. So uh, one of the things is like, we'll get in a conversation and there's so many ideas that are coming at me. It's sort of like, oh, mom mode. You're like, ah stop you can't do all that but I've learned like no just listen in that so he had one of his new ideas that he thought would be really great um and I think it was like to own a mobile home park this time and he was running the calculations like mom nah, if we bought this mobile home park and we paid this amount you know we'd cash flow this and I looked at him I'm like Levi that's that's really great like you're seeing that definitely there's a cash flow there but I, I just felt like the Lord put in my heart to just say, but is this what you're called to do? Is this part of the purpose that God has for you to build wealth? Because you can find all sorts of things where you can make money. But the question that needs to be answered, is this what you called me to do? Because any venture that we go into is going to require the grace of God. It's going to require perseverance. Not everything is going to work perfectly. And I, I'm not trying to be negative. It's just that when we walk out things in life and, and we are pursuing uh, God's best for things and we're, we're really working towards um, you know the blessings that he has for us and trying to cooperate with that, most of the time there's some sort of problem that is going to come in the way that we need to have the perseverance to stay with it and get through it. And uh, it was really, really interesting because he came back to me and he said, you know what, mom? He goes, I was thinking about what you said. He said, and you're right. I don't believe that buying a mobile home park is in my purpose because I don't think I have the grace to, to deal with some of the things that could come up with that type of investment. And I said, Levi, that's great because there is someone out there that is graced to purchase a mobile home park and to be a blessing. 
But God gave us a purpose in the area that we're going into to be a blessing and to show people God's love, treat them well, provide amazing places uh, for people to live. Uh, and you know what? We need to stay in that purpose because that's where the grace gifts are. Does that make sense? If I try to pursue something that sounds exciting because someone else was making money at it or someone else was successful, I am trying to hop into their purpose or, you know, kind of take territory that wasn't something that I was even designed to do. So as we pursue God, we hear from him and we stay with what his purpose is with the heart to help people is always going to be part of it and to be a blessing we can expect that God is going to abundantly increase us and bless us in those areas. Here's another scripture to encourage you. And I might just ask the question, what has God called you to do? What area has he asked you to step into? And what does that look like for you? Okay, listen to this. This is uh, in James 1.17 in the Passion Translation. Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. You can know that everything that comes from God is good. Many people have been taught that things that come from God are not always good. And we can just wipe that out and just know anything from God is good. I like to say it this way, God equals good devil equals bad, right? Anything from God I know is good. Listen to this. This is 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 8, and this is the new King James Version. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. I love this. And we're going to end today there. And this is um, a really important truth for you to remember. Our job is to plant and to water. In other words, when God gives us something to do, let's just say he wants us to grow or to um, yeah, grow sweet corn. Let's just say that's the assignment that we have. My job is to plant that sweet corn. My job is to water that sweet corn. But you know what? No matter how hard I try, I cannot make that plant produce kernels or corn. That's God's job. So when you and I faithfully plant in water in the garden or the area that God has given us, we can know that the increase will come from him. All right, thank you for joining me today. And please continue with me in this series, The Promise of Purpose. And tomorrow we'll continue on this and talk about how your success is imminent when you walk in purpose. God bless you.